Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and my fourth draft of the day. Yeah, four drafts in one day. Not too shabby. Anyways, it's Pacific time. Let's randomize a team until we get one. No. Randomize? Nope. Nope. No, yes, yes. Wasn't expecting to land on one so fast after the way the last two have gone. How convenient. My memory could serve me wrong here, but I think we've pretty much hit all of the, the three different bars. We've had a good team, we've had a bad team, and we've had the decent team. Even that team wasn't so good. We kind of snuck into the playoffs, so it's more so like... The good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, I just went back and watched the Metro, and we also got first rounded, so... Yeah. Never mind. Not so great. I will always consider making the playoffs a great accomplishment, though, so overall, I would say two of the drafts were, in my books, a success. But I know that by other standards, it's probably you want to win the Stanley Cup. I know. I've already had to edit out, like, three things, so if I'm not making any sense, I'm sorry. Pick number 10 is where we're gonna be drafting. Welcome to the team, Connor. That's very lucky. Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers will be our first selection. Elias Lindholm will be our second player. He'll be playing with Connor. That's going to be disgusting. From the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, we will be taking John Gibson, 88 overall. It's kind of funny how I was just saying that McDavid doesn't really do too well in fantasy drafts, I find, because doesn't get a whole lot of support. You get the first pick, and then there's a bunch of picks before you get your next one. Tyler Toffoli will be our next selection, a right winger, and he will be on that first line as well, I would imagine. We get back-to-back -back picks, which is always nice. 11.5 is very steep, but I'm gonna take EK65 nonetheless. I feel like he has been simming very well in the recent fantasy drafts I've been doing. Another not-so-great contract, but I will be taking OEL to be his defensive partner. There's one guy I've seen every freaking time and he better be here. I feel like we're taking a lot of flames but I'm gonna take Mangiapane because 2.4 is very doable. There he is. I've been trying to draft this guy forever. Trevor Moore, 82 overall, making 1.8. LA Kings, fire me vertical. 5 million might be a little steep but you know what? Comparatively, it's really not that bad so I'm gonna take March or so, 84 overall from the Golden Knights and next up I will take Braden McNabb at 2.8. You know what just because of the way other drafts have gone I'm gonna try to stack up. I'm taking Everly. We are already down to about 17 million dollars and we have a lot of picks to go. Let's go Edler 81 overall making 750. Nicholas is 81 overall making 750k. That is an absolute guarantee selection. I'm just trying to think here, but I believe I have every team covered, which if my memory serves me correct, would mean Ottawa was the only team I left out throughout all of these, and I feel kind of bad about it. We'll deal with this whole cap thing later. For now, I'm going to take Ayafalo. Our backup will be Mr. Hill. Nine million bucks to go. We need two defensemen and a grand total of three forwards. Curtis Lazar, 1,080,000 overall, and he will be our final right winger. Nick Paul should not be 81 overall. That is criminal. New Tavara, we do need defenseman. He's a left-handed defenseman. Yeah, that'll work. We need two more centers. Nick Benino would be a perfect pickup. And at this point, we just need one more defenseman and one more center. And we are good to go. I think this team's going to be good. I have some high expectations for this team, actually. Obviously, I'll get more of a realistic sense when we put the lines together. Maybe I am completely bending this in my brain. And I feel like we've drafted better than we have. But I guess we'll find out in the near future. Derek Ryan is a two-way forward. He's got 86 face-offs. Okay, hello. And on that note, we simply need a defenseman. Ready? Team shoots left. How many right and left-handed defensemen do we actually have? I haven't really looked. So we have one and one. Two left, three left, four. Okay, well then. Matt Benning shoots right. 79 overall, 1.2. We have a little bit of wiggle room at the trade deadline if we're not doing so hot. I feel like we got a lot of really high overalls. Our defense might be meh, but I know we have a very good first pairing with OEL and EK65. Once again, we did not take Ryan Suzuki. Yeah, maybe we're not as good as I thought. The team looked good on paper, at least while I was drafting them. But now that I look at it, I feel like our overalls dropped. What happened? You know what? I don't care that this line gets a dash one. I moved Everly up so he can play here. Our first line is Lindholm, McDavid, and Toffoli. So they should light the lamp, hopefully. Actually, because Lindholm is right-handed and his face-offs is 88, I'm going to play McDavid on the left wing. So here's what our offense looks like. We have Everly, Marjasso, Mangiapane on line two. Moore, Benino, Roy... Or Wa, I feel like it's Roy, Lazar, Ryan, and Ayafalo. Defensively, we got OEL playing with EK65. Hopefully they can do some bits. Oh, you know what? 
OEL, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm running with him on pair number two. Edler and Carlson somehow get a plus three. In net, we got Johnny Gibson. So hopefully he can carry the defensive weight a little bit. Obviously, I have to say McDavid gets the most points. I think he'll do quite well on this line, but I don't know. Maybe... 88. Say he gets 88. And I think our team will get 46 wins and make the playoffs. That might be a little too optimistic, but I'm sticking to it. Slight change up. Benino's been promoted to line number two because he's got 82 faceoffs. Mangiapane can play down here. Our bottom six will just be that much better. All right, before we get started, how do you guys think we're going to do? Be sure to make your predictions now based on what you've seen. And without further ado, let's see how the Pacific Draft will do in comparison to the Metro, the Central, and the Atlantic. We're off to a 6-0 and start here. That has to come back down. 10-5-0. and We did get balanced out a little bit. 10-6-0. and But we're still doing okay. I feel like our goalie's playing phenomenal. 3-1 win. Then two shutouts in a row. I should say goalies. Because I don't know who played those games. I'm getting the feeling that we have a competitive division this year. Because this record really isn't that bad. Compared to some of the other ones I've seen. In this draft challenge series. Mini series. Whatever you want to call it. And we are 6 out of 8. It took a lot longer than... This time but the first coach firing has happened with a 34 21 and 8 record we have one more game before the trade deadline i don't know if i want to make any moves this team is kind of doing it themselves we will check out the trade deadline this time can we make it 35 wins no we cannot we got absolutely smacked let's keep our current trade block and enter the deadline who's available at this year's trade deadline can you imagine? Even this I don't think is going to go through. But man, if we could get Huberdo to play on the first line with McDavid, oh my days. It's worth a shot. Let's try it out. Proposed trade. Trade rejected. Value isn't there whatsoever. I added a next year's second. If they say no to this, I'll add a next year's third. If they say no to that, then I am just not going to bother because it's going to be way too much. Pittsburgh Penguins third for next year. Trade rejected. All right. We can say we tried. John Klingberg would be good defensively. Rati, a second and a third for John Klingberg. Will that go through? No. Wow. All right. And I guarantee you when I try this, I'm an idiot. But I'm going to send it anyway. Proposed trade. Asset no longer on team. He got traded right before I sent it. We might have to find a replacement defenseman. But if this goes through, I, his value somehow higher than Lindholm. I don't know how that happens. But anyway, proposed trade. No, still not even close. This is actually the last time I'm trying. If this doesn't go through, then I am tapping out. Trade rejected. Okay, it was worth a shot. No moves were made, but let's continue with our team that is doing pretty well for themselves anyway. I don't think we have to make any moves. That's a pretty big trade. Krejci and Riley headed to San Jose in exchange for a first, Wallander, and a seventh. On top of that, we have Genther and Thompson, plus a second round pick headed to Dallas in exchange for... Four, O'Reilly, Pearson, and a sixth. Oh, wow. We actually have Huberdo traded here. I was not ready for that. He got traded to Seattle in exchange for Luke Hughes and two firsts. Please do not collapse. Please do not collapse, Kings. We can do this. Cheeky little six game, seven game winning streak, eight game winning streak after the trade death. What is this? Wow. I have never seen this in my entire life. What is going on? Normally, I'm distraught the other way. This way... That's got to be the most ridiculous post-trade deadline I've ever witnessed. I'm pretty sure we went 15-2 and post-trade deadline. That might have been President's Trophy winning just for that. We did finish first in the Pacific. Anaheim was the next team there with 100. And we did it! We won the President's Trophy! Wow, that is incredible. I was not prepared for that. What a pleasant surprise. We have Chicago and Colorado making it here at 19th and 20th, respectively. Or maybe not so respectively, you know what I'm saying? McDusty put up 95 points. We got 70 from Marcheseau, 66 from Toffoli. EK, 65 put up 66. OEL put up 62. Lindholm only put up 60, which is kind of weird. Everly had 51 we got 37 from Roy John Gibson legend six shutouts he went 39 21 and 5 and 9 14 257 and then we have Hill that went 11 4 and 3 with two shutouts and a 9 17 all of this for a first round exit Spencer Knight 
40 wins tied with Vasilevsky, but Vasilevsky beat him in save percentage by 0 0.001. I do not see a single 920 save percentage. What a year for Victor Hedman. 79 points in 82 games. Roman Yossi put up 70 in 82, obviously, because injuries were off. I don't know why I'm pointing out how many games they played. I feel like I'm used to doing the playoff one, where it does sort of vary. Where this? Not so much. McAvoy gets a nice amount of points. EK65 is at number four. Sydney the Kidney puts up 102. We get 100 from Marchie. Those are the only two players, both Nova Scotia-ers. It's very possible that McDavid won the Rocket Richard. Let's sort and see. No, Ovechkin put up 46. Come on, Ovi. Can we just make it past the first round? This would be the most successful draft if we get past the first round. We got the Golden Knights. Let's sim the first three games and find out how they go. First period, second period, third period. Okay, we... Managed to hold on. Our backs are still up against the wall. It is a 3-1 series now, and that will be it. There's no coming back from that. Whoa! We have hope. We have a sliver, but it's there. Can we somehow push a game seven? That would be miraculous. First period's 1-1. We'll go real time for this because it is coming down to the wire now. Knights had a power play, but we managed to kill it off. Shots are pretty equal in this contest. As we get past the halfway point of the third period here. No goals yet for either team. And if they get one, that will be our season. All right, it looks like we're headed to OT. Oh my word, we've done it. We've actually done it. Marchessault has pushed a game seven. Look how well Mackenzie Blackwood played and it just wasn't quite good enough. Was it there, Mac Attack? If we lose after all this, fuming. I'm gonna be so upset. Why would you do this to me? First period. Okay. 1-0 Knights. Second period, 3-1 Knights. It's happening, isn't it? It's actually gonna happen. We were that close to having the reverse sweep and they are just gonna <laughs> lead us from the playoffs. Yeah, I, I'm not counting us out because I thought we were out a long time ago and somehow we fought back. So still possible, but the odds are extremely low. All right, GG. There's your three stars. The Seattle Kraken take home the Stanley Cup. McDusty had nine points in seven games, and then we had Lindholm, who was point a game to Foley six, so the team did quite well, I gotta say. Except for that guy. That guy right there did not do quite well. Carey Price had 16 wins. Vili Huso had 12. And then 921 from Sorokin. 923 from Spencer Knight. Ekblad led defenseman in the playoffs with 16 points in 20 games. D'Angelo had 15 and 25, Grizzly 13. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, obviously. We probably would have won the Stanley Cup if we got him, but no. Regardless, him and Eichel both had 26, but Eichel did it in 20 games, so how about that, Jonathan? Here is the team awards for that season. We got the president, so I think that that is still our most successful draft. Sydney the Kidney gets the Art Ross. And he also gets the Hart Memorial. Hedman gets the Norris. Patty Kane gets the Lady Bing. Caulfield with the Calder Memorial. Giberdeau with the Conn Smythe. We get Blackwood taking home the Vesna and the Jennings. Ekblad gets the Masterton. Fontaine with the Jack Adams. Let's just give the Golden Knights everything. How about that? Selkie goes to Kopitar. Crosby with the Ted Lindsay. And Ovi gets the Rocket Richard. Here is your playoff tree. And that will conclude the Divisional Draft miniseries. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully it was entertaining. And I guess, you know, it was a bunch of drafts. But they were all different. We had to take players from each division. And unfortunately, like I said, I think Ottawa was the only team that I managed to not take a player from. I could be wrong. Maybe there was some other teams that I missed and just wasn't really paying full attention, but I tried to keep track and I think I had one player from every other team at least. Well, anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon.